want to take this opportunity to state my intent to appeal my convictions. If there are any lawyers listening and willing to take on my appeal, take a moment to please reach out to me. Oh, wow. The case of Chandler Halderson, the young man who got so caught up in his web of lies to everyone in his life, including his girlfriend, or I guess, weren't they engaged? When his parents began to realize that he had been lying for years to them, that everything he had told them was just all in his head, that he went out of his way. He, he worked so hard to make these lies seem real that if he'd have really put this into a, a, a job, the kid could have been making a lot of money. <laughs> but all of his efforts, regardless, the one thing he couldn't do is commit a crime and cover up all the evidence because they have so much evidence that as you will see here, it doesn't look like he has a chance in hell for an appeal. County man who killed his parents and dismembered their bodies wants to appeal his conviction. But now Chandler Halderson faces a major roadblock in doing that. Many of you will probably remember the case. Halderson killed his parents, Bart and Krista, in July of 2021, then reported them missing. He was arrested for provi providing false information, and soon after that, he was charged after the bodies of his parents parents were found. A jury found him guilty in January of 2022, and a couple of months later, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of extended supervision. I want to give a big shout out to WKOW27 News, who did a fabulous job on covering this update, because since this trial's gone away, it seems that nobody else is paying any attention to it. But it was one of those trials that really caught my attention from the beginning. It I think because he's just so strange. He is so strange. Well, just last week, Halderson's attorney filed a no merit report, meaning he did not find grounds for Halderson's appeal. 27 News secured a copy of that report, and now the clock is ticking for Halderson to respond to it. Grace Hodak has you covered on why law experts say this might be the last time we ever hear from Halderson. This 23-page no-merit report was filed by Chandler Halderson's attorney, Michael Covey, and it's a major roadblock in Halderson's request for an appeal. UW Law Professor John Gross tells me a no-merit report is when the court-appointed lawyer assigned to the appeal has read and reviewed everything that has happened before and at trial and decides there isn't any issue they could argue for an appeal because it would be, quote, frivolous and unethical. Gross says it isn't uncommon, especially in a case like Halderson's, where he says the evidence of guilt was overwhelming. It's very hard to look at that transcript and find an error that would be so significant that you think the outcome would have changed. Halderson has 30 days to respond to the report. I asked Gross if he thinks Halderson will. He says it's hard to predict. But uh, I do think back to the fact that he, he didn't want to attend his sentencing hearing. These papers could close Halderson's case for good. He has very, very few legal options left to him at this point. Once this chapter closes, uh, we really may not be hearing from Mr. Halderson ever again. The no merit report states there was sufficient evidence for a jury to convict Halderson on all counts. This includes, quote, the immense amount of evidence to prove Halderson had recently been at both locations where his parents' body parts were found. I, I'm, I'm on the fence. Should I do a deep dive on this case? I need, I need somebody to tell me because I feel like this is one of those that is just so, it's just calling to me. I can't, I can't help it. It's calling to me. Um, so I, I might add it to my list of things to deep dive on, but thankfully it looks like we're good. We're good. This kid's in jail for life. Hopefully he'll have no chance in, of ever getting out of jail. He deserves to be where he is and he needs to take all his little, um, creativity that he has in his mind. Cause apparently he has a ton of it and he needs to apply it to something constructive something that possibly would help society because God knows his karma is really bad right now. God knows he needs Jesus in his life. Uh, he hopefully has, will find peace at some point in time and the families will find peace at some point in time. 
I feel so bad for everyone involved in this. I'm not going to say he's insane because obviously he, he wasn't insane. He wasn't clinically insane, but what he did was absolutely insane. The lies he told were insane. He may have a case of being a bit, a habitual liar, um, narcissistic tendencies, all that good stuff going on there. And I need to look back and see if the behavioral panel did anything on him. I bet they did. I think they did. Yeah, I think they did. This one is crazy, but I saw this update and wanted to come on and just let you guys know about it really quickly and uh, keep you updated. We may do something in the, on this in the future. So that's why it was important for me to speak out and let you guys know that some movement on the appeal. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, don't forget, later this morning, we're going to go in and see what's going on in the West sentencing. Hopefully, we'll finally get that closure on the West sentencing. And I'll put the video out about the results on that later this afternoon. Have a blessed day. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.